Beautiful. I have a desire to make myself a desk and a kitchen table. And I need some wood for that. So instead of going to the lumber yard, I am going to the woods. This is cherry tree one. You can see we've got blue paint on it from the Forester. Looks like I can fell it right there without, without it getting hung up. It's naturally leaning that way a bit, so that should be fairly easy. And it's a good size. I can Alaskan mill it right here in place and carry the boards out instead of trying to get the, uh, the logs out somehow. Here's one of the things I made out of my rough sawn lumber. A dual bookshelf assembly. So the shelves are rough sawn red oak. The middle piece here is rough sawn maple with a natural tongue oil finish. And as you notice, it's a steel wood combination construction. Um, it's my personal style that I like to do. I like to do some metal work and woodwork. This also lends itself to this rough sawn lumber very well because I don't have a planer, a jointer, things that you would need to do an all wood construction, a joint, a biscuit jointer, things like that. Um, so I'm able to weld and do the steel work and then put in the wood accents with the rough sawn and it's a good combination that works for me. The steel construction also allows me to do some neat things with it. In this case, I put some hidden doors in. This one accesses the under stairs storage. It's also a playroom for the kids. The strength of the steel construction allows me to get away with this. And a piano hinge located between the center section and the bookshelf is what makes it all work. Of course, this side moves too. This is the other one I want to take down. There's garbage across the bottom here, so I gotta clean that up. Again, we're gonna go with the lean with this baby. Let's the fall right over there. And there's room for that, so we're going to let it do what it wants.
We've got three two down safely. It's a beautiful piece of wood. So we've got our two trees here. Next step, decide what length logs I can get out of here and get the Alaskan mill out and start making some boards. Out of here, I'm gonna cut these logs at the straightest point. So the longest I can get from the butt to the straightest point. So there's a pretty good jog in this one here. So I'm gonna cut this one here and then just kind of roll it in place so I'm ready to go with the uh, with the Alaskan mill when that when I bring that up. And so I'm gonna to have to be fairly careful with obviously it's propped up, there's some tension in it, but I think I'll make the first cut over here. And I thought it was hard just carrying the saw in here. Now I've got my Alaskan mill and a board. That made that, oh, burnt a few more calories. First step with Alaskan milling is to get our first cut done. I use this two by 10 to have a nice flat surface. So, I stay on plane this way and then front and back. So I wanna hang a little bit over the outside there. Um, and then I'm gonna run screws in the high spots, which looks like right here. And the end just to hold it in place. All right, I've got my top, my plate on there. That's gonna allow a nice flat surface for my Alaskan mill to run across, crossed. I put screws down into the log. So the first thing here is obviously make sure that our depth of cut is large enough to avoid those screws, which I pre-measured. And then just look at where we're at here. And I think that's gonna be perfect. We'll get probably two nice logs at the center out of this. So we'll take our first cut We'll remove that half dome piece, take a look at that when that's done, and then uh, pick a thickness for our board once we're in there. Just sliding my top plate down, obviously. <clears throat> Make sure I can go all the way to the end of this log. Ideally, you would have one long enough. We don't have to move it, but I don't. So we're gonna give this a go. that piece off that's called slab wood now we've exposed our log some nice beautiful grain in there this will be awesome 
Now our Alaskan mill can ride right, right on this flat surface of the first cut. So we need to adjust our depth of cut for the, the thickness of wood we want. So I've got some spray painted marks here, an inch and a quarter, so I'm going to tighten on that one. Perfect. Ready to rip our next cut. There's our first board. Turned out pretty nice. Number two. Beautiful wood. Look at that baby. Beautiful. A few knots in it. Awesome color. I'm impressed. On to the next. All right, got the slab wood off the top of that one, and look at the color of that one. That is gorgeous. I'm thinking this may be the one I use for my desk, but that is pretty cool inside. Oh, look at that beauty. Wow. That is a fine looking piece of wood. Wow, that's gonna be a beast getting out of here yet. But look at that baby. Beautiful. Another good thing to use rough sawn lumber is boxing things. So in this particular case, I use some rough sawn aspen stained dark to match the woodwork of the house to box out this glue laminate beam. Another beauty. Here I have my stash of boards. All done Alaskan milling. It's definitely not a casual undertaking. I've got quite a few boards now. And so I've got quite a few boards now. The hard part is now I've got to pack all this stuff out of here. Well, that was the most physically demanding thing I have done in a while. I carried the first two down by hand. That's not a good idea. That's a lot of work. The second group I bundled together and just slid down the hill. That was much better still. Not the easiest, but better. So I'm going to unbundle this. And then I've got two more up top along with my top plate I got to get down. Whoo, almost done. I accomplished my task for today and got these things out of the woods. Wanted to get them out before things warmed up a little bit more and the ticks came out like crazy. I'd have probably two dozen on me if I did that after the frost came out of the ground. It's coming up real quick. So that's it for today. I'm going to clean these things up, 
get them stored away, probably treat the ends with something to try to prevent more splitting. You can see I already have some splits started in some of these. That's one thing you realize when you start trying to make your own lumber is part of the cost in lumber is because you have to cut a lot more than you actually get because of all these splits and imperfections, things like that. I think if you're gonna cut 10 boards, you're not gonna get 10 perfect boards out of it. It's nature, right? Anyway, whew, that's quite the workout. Watch says I burnt over 700 calories and it feels like it. Hit the showers. Now that I've got all my wood by the house, I'm gonna clean it up on the sides and remove the live edge. Um, personally, I like to work with square boards and I'll show you some of the stuff I've built with this lumber before. Um, I know you can keep the live, live edge on and dry it and use it like that. And you'll have to preserve it in some way to maintain that live edge, otherwise, that uh, dies off and your bark will start peeling off and and uh, not be ideal in that way. But I'm gonna clean this thing up. And the only thing, what I use for that is a circular saw. <clears throat> Part of the challenge of working with this Alaskan milled lumber, obviously, is you've got two irregular surfaces. So we can't just put this thing through a table saw and clean up an edge because there's no edge to run through uh, to run against the fence of the circular saw and clean up the other. So we got to start with one edge and for this you're gonna have to use something like a circular saw. And I, I've got this uh, piece of lumber milled wood here that I'm gonna use as my straight edge and just try to uh, maximize the wood usage here and find the straightest spot in there and scribe a line with a pencil. And then the next thing we're gonna do is just take our circular saw and run along this edge. You could use it, you know, clamp a fence on here, whatever. For my purposes, I'm gonna eyeball it and run it across here. That is uh, all I need to do. Now that we have one edge cleaned up, we can grab a, you can run this to a table saw or very simply, we can just grab a speed square and run it along here and see where the narrowest point of the board is and cut to that. Or depending on the lengths, this one narrows down at the end here. So if I wanna maximize my length or my width here, I'm gonna pick somewhere in between, and I, I don't necessarily care that it cleans up fully on this uh, narrower end. So it looks like I'm gonna be able to get 10 inches out of this relatively easy, and it won't clean up perfectly on that end, but that is all right. So all I'm gonna do is take my square here, use my pencil, and mark a few locations at 10 inches. And then go back to my straight edge, lay it on here and scribe this line. Now if I were good, I know that if I were to hold my pencil at the 10 inch mark and slide this across, I could make a pretty good line. Uh, but I found I'm not that great at that, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to square up the ends. So what did we end up with after all that hard work? We've got a 10 inch wide by 94 inches, just short of eight feet long by one and a quarter inch rough sawn cherry board. The next step is seal the ends of this 
to try to prevent cracking and uh, get the thing dried so we can make something out of it. I've got quite a few more boards to go, but that's the simple process I use. Now I'm going to repeat that and uh, get some boards drying and uh, in the hopper to make some cool stuff with. As I've said, one of the hard parts uh, with doing this type of lumber without a kiln is drying it at the right rate to prevent cracking. You can see some of my boards have already cracked. Now that's partially my fault. I should have sealed the ends as soon as I Alaskan milled them. Uh, but I went on vacation for a week and was away from home. So I'm finally getting to it now. But what I'm going to use this time, they make specialty products for this. You can use paint, whatever. I'm going to use some Danish oil. I have not tried this before, but I'm going to try it this time. We'll see how it goes. And basically try to seal up, get some oil in the end grain. Um, that's one way to slow things down a little bit. Let that moisture come up through this way. And that seems to, to help prevent cracking. I'm not sure why. But what we're trying to do is maintain the structural integrity or the integrity of the wood fiber, but allow the moisture to come out. Um, so I'm just going to put some of this Danish oil on a rag and put it on the end grain. End grain, as much as it wants to take, try to get that saturated. Now you could do your entire board with this, but the problem then is you're not going to let the moisture out. And your board could potentially mold or rot um, just with retaining that moisture while it's dead. You don't want to do that. So we'll try this. It's taking it pretty good. It's really sucking it in there. The other thing this won't do, obviously, is stain the wood or anything. This is just a natural color just to provide some moisture barrier also I want to be very clear I'm not telling you you should do this this is an experiment something I am trying I don't know that it's gonna work I'm not saying it will work so I like to experiment with things I'm just gonna use a bristle bristle brush to clean this all the sawdust and dirt off this before I bring it inside. One board down, much more to go. Now that was a lot of work, but I'm all finished. I've got my wood stored in the basement here. I treated all of the end grain with that Danish oil to try to prevent splitting. I have found from my personal experience that the basement is a good spot for me to dry wood. It stays a bit cooler with a bit of humidity and allows the wood to dry slowly. I have not had any problems with checking and major cracking. Um, so I'm gonna continue to do this. The conventional way is to lay it horizontal with strips of wood between it and stack it up. I've tried that. It's a little bit frustrating because with the Laskin milling, of course, I don't have two parallel surfaces, perfectly parallel surfaces to stack the wood up. If I get a few uh, pieces high, it tends to tip over. Of course, I have chose uh, to cut this relatively thick um, so that air in the Alaskan mill and having surfaces off a little bit from one another really exaggerate a lean to the pile. So I like to put it up on end. Stacking it on end works well for me. I'm not saying you should do it. There's probably, I'm sure the horizontal method is overall better, um, but this works for me, my space. I like to have it inside, away from the elements, that way I've got no risk of molding. Um, you can see I did a lot of, kind of finished on both sides, but I also have a few here that I chose to keep the live edge on as an experiment. We'll see how this stuff cures. 
So I'm going to check on this wood periodically, make sure it's drying okay. And from my past experience, it's not going to be an issue. But the next time we see this wood, we're going to make something cool out of it. Thanks for watching. Adios. Look at this hunk of cherry. Cherry chicken chow chow!